George was a 52-year-old guy with a wife and two kids with a career as a math professor. He was 5 foot 10 inches, weighed 215 pounds, so his BMI was 30.8, which is technically obese. Overall, a relatively healthy guy. He didn't drink alcohol. He did smoke one pack per day of cigarettes up until the age of 40. His exercise came mostly in the form of walking. He did eat a lot of unhealthy food though, and this included putting sugar in his coffee, which he drank coffee every day, about two to three cups per day. And then he would always eat desserts with every meal, and then every meal wasn't exactly healthy, is either pizza, burger, something like that. And he did have prediabetes, and this was before the new diabetes drugs came out like Ozempic and Manjaro. Prediabetes, type two diabetes, and metabolic syndrome, they're all really part of the same problem, which is to say that the body has insulin resistance. In fact, George met three out of the five criteria for metabolic syndrome, as he had high triglyceride levels, low HDL levels, and high fasting glucose levels. Then one day, he starts noticing that his belly just isn't feeling right. So he didn't really think much of it until this feeling kept coming back day after day and he thought maybe he ate something bad. And not being the type of guy to see a doctor, he kept ignoring this discomfort which was becoming more and more painful. And now he's eating less, just not feeling that hungry. He thought it was just because his stomach wasn't feeling right. So he ignored this as well. But then after this had been going on for about a month, his wife notices that he looked thinner and so his wife makes him go see the doctor. After getting checked out with some blood work and he also got a CAT scan of the abdomen, they find this, a mass in the pancreas, which is highly suspicious for pancreatic cancer. About 57,000 people are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer every year in the United States. Mortality is very high with about 46,000 deaths expected every year. So you can do the math. Only patients who are able to undergo a complete resection have a chance of cure. When disease is unresectable because of invasion into critical vascular structures, median survival is about a year, and even less so if the cancer has spread to other organs. So the only realistic chance of survival is if you catch it early, which is very hard to do. But there are some warning signs that can clue you in. This includes abdominal discomfort, especially if the pain <sighs> radiates to the lower back, decreased appetite, which goes along with weight loss, and sometimes jaundice, where the skin starts turning yellow, or when it happens to the eyes, it's known as scleral icterus. Sometimes there can be nausea and vomiting as well, and then rarely, pancreatic cancer can have fever. There are certain risk factors that make people more prone to getting pancreatic cancer. This includes tobacco use, high red meat consumption, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. In fact, pancreatic cancer is one of the 13 obesity-related cancers. Unfortunately for George, his pancreatic cancer was too far advanced for him to be a surgical candidate, so he was treated with aggressive chemotherapy. Because the chemotherapy suppressed his immune system, he was incredibly vulnerable to any type of infection. His wife brought him to the ER because he was very confused saying things that weren't making sense, or just a bunch of gibberish. And this eventually deteriorated into him becoming barely responsive. By the time he came to the ICU, which is when I first saw him, he was so lethargic that he wasn't able to protect his airway, so we had to put a breathing tube in in order to protect against the possibility of him aspirating. And then things just kept getting worse. He developed fever, his heart rate was through the roof, his blood pressure was low, blood work came back and it was showing that he had kidney damage, some liver damage, all of this was painting a clinical picture that he had an infection spreading throughout his body known as sepsis. The infection most likely originated from the bacteria in his intestines that migrated through the intestinal wall and into the bloodstream for which his immune system was too weak to take on. The sepsis quickly progressed to septic shock to the point that we had to pump adrenaline into his veins just to keep him alive. Despite our best efforts, he went into cardiac arrest and we weren't able to get his heart back. To prevent pancreatic cancer or minimize your risk of getting it, there are some things that you can do. Some factors are out of your control, like increasing age and genetics, but the most important things that you can do include avoiding or minimizing alcohol intake, same for tobacco, and doing everything in your power to lower or improve insulin resistance. And if you're overweight or obese, to lose weight. Improving insulin resistance and losing weight though, they're really part of the same problem. They go hand in hand. Eating healthy food, meaning whole, real food, things like fruits and vegetables, seeds, nuts, eggs, lean meats, whole intact grains, that's part of a healthy diet. And then throw in 150 minutes of exercise per week and you're well on your way to improving insulin resistance. But sometimes this alone isn't enough and some people need 
GLP-1 agonist type medications like Ozempic or Manjaro in order to get to where they need to go.